vibe trying to be more serious, but your book to be not so serious. It is what it is. That's why when I was let go, it was like, oh my God, this is uh, not that I had any handcuffs on, but the handcuffs were off and I was able to just become you know, the new version of me, whatever that was going to be. It's a sports gate exclusive. We are here with someone who is going to be in a pretty uh, challenging scenario, a triple threat match. Doesn't have to be pinned to lose the match. I never understood that rule, but it's the rule, right? Matt Cardona in action with NWA Hard Times on Worldwide Pay-Per-View, streaming with Fight TV November 12th. Matt, a triple threat match with two very large opponents. How do you feel about the triple threat? Do you think it should be elimination? I, I never understood the you don't have to be pinned to, to get knocked out rule. Yeah, I don't care who's in this match. I don't care if they add Billy Corgan himself to this match. Uh, my plan is to walk out the winner. Uh, Tyrus thinks he deserves to be the champion. Trevor thinks he deserves to be the champion. I think I deserve to be the champion. But I need to be the champion, and the NWA needs me to be the champion. I mean, Trevor, look, he, he's a great competitor inside those mm -hmm. ropes. Bell to bell, he's great. But what has he done as champion since I had to relinquish it? He's done absolutely nothing. Uh, does he take any bookings outside NWA? You know, he, he's certainly not traveling the world. I don't even know if he leaves his his house, to be honest. So Tyrus, on the other hand, you know, he'd bring it on Fox News. He'd bring it some, some, some national and worldwide attention. So I get that. But the NWA knows that I need to be the champion. I think they know that. They should know that. Now, you said this challenging thing before, and, and do you get any flack for saying things like that? Do you get any trouble? You, you are an outspoken What are they going to do? What are they going to do? do? Fire me? <laughs> I don't have a contract. If they want to stop using Matt Cardona, I mean, they're lost, pal. You know? And All listen, right. I, I'm not here to, to 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 invade NWA. I'm not an outside. I want to help NWA. I generally do. I, I want to save the NWA. NWA is great. We have, you know, hard times. Uh, you know, every couple of months we have a big pay-per-view. And then there's these TV tapings, right? And you, you tape a bunch of TVs. For months, I, I want to go to NWA TV every single week. I want the NWA to grow and get bigger, and I think I'm the perfect person for that. I'm not trying to to hate on the NWA. I want to save it. Mm -hmm. You know your value, and, and I, I know that that's something uh, you and I have talked about once or twice before. What do you think about that now? Being the, for, for lack of a better phrase, the, the most sought-after free agent right now in professional wrestling who's not like locked in with a major promotion through a contract. I'm the agent. I'm not only a free agent. I am the agent. I am the guy. Uh, and it's cool because I love being my own boss. I love being able to bounce around uh, from promotion to promotion, go overseas whenever I want. I, I have the last match musical. I, I can do whatever I want. The major recipe of a podcast. Um, I, I love just being everywhere and, and trying new things. And, you know, I'm going to make myself. I'm going to push myself. You know, and and I love it. This this these past two years have been incredible. Mm -hmm. Now you've been out of the WWE system for a while. Recently, you said Zack Ryder is dead, and that got a lot of attention. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, but you did you didn't rule. Obviously, never say never in wrestling. I think a lot of people say that too. What, what do you think of, of everything that's happened in the last few months with WWE? Obviously, you spent a long, long time of your life in it, and I would love to know your take on the changes in WWE. Yeah, it's certainly exciting, right? I mean, every week it seems like, or maybe not every week, but it seems like someone's coming back or, or debuting or re-debuting. It's fresh. Uh, it's exciting. It's must-see TV, and I think that's what wrestling uh, should be. And, yeah, I said Zack Ryder is dead because, and listen, you said it, never say never, mm -hmm. right? But if I were to ever go back, I think it has to be as Matt Cardona. You know, Zack Ryder, it was what it was. I'm so grateful for that run. It has set me up for this run. You know, without being Zack Ryder in WWE, I wouldn't be Matt Cardona talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. So it set me up for everything. But the the woo woo woo, the the, the headband, the sunglasses, it's dead. And and I was trying to get away from that stuff while I was still Zack Ryder in WWE. But you know, you can't write the show. You know, so if I'm trying to be more serious, but you're booked to be not so serious, it is what it is. That's why. When I was let go, it was like, oh, my God, this is uh, not that I had any handcuffs on, but the handcuffs were off and I was able to just become you know, the new version of me, whatever that was going to be. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I know you're a fan of nostalgia. I know you're a fan of Ghostbusters and ridiculous yes. sci-fi scenarios. I know you enjoy like wrestling nostalgia. And I was a mark for The Undertaker uh, in the 90s. And I saw Undertaker versus Undertaker. And when you brought up Zack Ryder is dead, I immediately thought of Matt Cardona versus Zack Ryder. I would love to do it. It's a cinematic match. Uh, there's... <laughs> I don't have the skills to do that kind of edit job. <laughs> uh, if there's someone listening who knows how to do it, I would love how to do it. Uh, I guess technically I couldn't use the Zack Ryder <laughs> IP since I'm not in WWE. Um, I, Add I some know. letters. That's how yeah. you get away with it. <laughs> but I, I thought about doing something like that before. Um, it would be really, really fun. I'd have to shave the beard, though. It could be the other side. <laughs> oh, we had to do reshoots. We're gonna get yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, talk, talk about obviously everything going on in wrestling. You've paved your own path with it. And you were doing this within the WWE system in terms of like, like now 10, 12 years ago, it's commonplace. If you're even going to be an independent wrestler on the independent circuit that you have to have social media, you have to kind of create at least some of your own content. You have to have that presence. You have to be interactive. And I'm not saying you're the only person that did that, but you were certainly one of those guys that saw the wave coming in with yes. social media and embraced it. Do you, do you do you have people that come up with, to you and ask you like how do I actually do this or how do I do this even better because it's such an evolving game I work in it every day and it feels like there's another way to do it in terms of this app or that app and and you seem very advantageous you will have a career as a social media consultant at some point after wrestling I think wow that that's a loaded question so let me start by saying you know yes 2011 I started a YouTube show because I I saw the writing on the wall for me as Zack Ryder in WWE, I knew there was no plan and that's fine. You know, that, mm -hmm. that that's fine, but I wasn't going to, you know, just sit back and take it. I was going to fight and I was going to do it my way uh, by starting this YouTube show. And I wasn't the first person to have a web show. There was like Miz and Morrison before me and a couple, I think like JTG and Chad and Santino, but they weren't filming it. Col they Colt Cabana had the podcast stuff going on yeah, as well. But, and yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Colt, Colt had the pie. Colt even yeah. had a Scotty Goldman, a WWE yeah. show. What, and, what's cracking? Yeah. Right, right. And, which is a great show. And all those shows were cool and entertaining. But at the end of the day, maybe they were writing some of the content, but they weren't, you know, editing it. They weren't funding mm -hmm. it. They weren't doing any of that. And that's what I was doing. I think the fans saw that by how bad the, the video quality was, the editing quality was. But it was the, it was the charm of the show. Um, and listen the social media and using the social media it was gonna happen eventually right mm -hmm. i was definitely one of the first people to get on board but it's not like i'm saying if i didn't start tweeting that there'd be no twitter and rest of course yeah. not it was gonna it was coming it was coming i was just you know ahead of the curve because in my real life i was using you know all this social media as matt cardona the real life human so i started using that zach Ryder, the wrestler and kind of you know blurring the lines with with matt cardona the human and zach Ryder, the wrestler through the youtube show i was able to do goofy stuff or show people my my star wars fandom you know for example which you don't really see if i'm losing in a minute and a half on monday night raw with no entrance you know what i'm saying i was able to show my love of action figures stuff like that um and and now all these years later people do ask me you know what can i do and how can i stand out and i say like social media is free it is free advertisement but the double-edged sword is free for everybody. So how yeah. are you going to stand out? And I don't know how you're going to stand out. You got to figure that out. But mm -hmm. you you have all these tools, uh, Twitter, TikTok, uh, you know, Instagram, YouTube. You have all these tools that are free. And then eventually they'll pay you. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to figure out your path and, and, and a way to get yourself over. Because it's all about getting yourself over. Let's talk the things you're passionate about. Obviously, your podcast network, you guys covering collectibles and all these different things and that that is another world and the figure it out show is incredible and you've certainly carved your whole way I, I i remember being with you at a convention there were people coming up to you just to talk about other collectibles that were that people could get at the convention right. and you have that passion for it is there a recent find is there something you're pursuing because there's always the next figure you got to yeah. get mint in box what are you looking for yeah honestly you know at this point it's like, what can I find that I don't think I need until I see it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I'm, I always go to these vintage toy stores and I always want to leave with something, right? So and it's, it's horrible to say, but I have so much. Like, yeah, I have a complete LJN WF collection, a complete uh, Hasbro WF collection. So like all the stuff from my childhood that I want to have, I have. So now it's about finding something that, you know, I thought I hated as a kid, but now I have nostalgic feelings for it. So I want to buy it or finding some, 
unreleased prototype that I didn't know existed. So stuff like that is still fun when I'm able to find uh, a holy grail like that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. NWA Hard Times is on pay-per-view coming up here November 12th through Fight. You can get it through the Fight app as well. Obviously, the podcasts are out. Um, some exciting things in the world of wrestling. A lot of people talking about the future of where things are going. What is something about wrestling that you don't think is happening in terms of how it's presented, in terms of how people can get it? I mean, you you are a forward-thinking guy. And that's why I'm asking these questions because I think you're really intelligent. Is there something in wrestling that's missing that you don't see that there's there's a gap we got to fill that there's there's some there's some other way we got to find this this uh missing piece and, and fill it in because it seems like it evolves so quickly now with the way people consume the content you know i actually love how wrestling is evolving now and the fact that you know i, I bring this up a lot gcw right you know mm -hmm. on paper maybe it's an independent promotion but you know people all over the world know about it through these streaming services you know nwa it's not on you know television it's on fight tv you know, I, I just love how the internet has kind of taken over wrestling and it's 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 made so many different companies, made so many different people because, you know, uh, an independent promotion in, I don't know, uh, Cleveland can now be streamed by everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm the AIW, you know, I'm their, their main guy. I had to give up my titles there. Hopefully I win them back soon. But, you know, people know all about me and AIW through social media. Me posted pictures with the belts or they can download the show. So I think wrestling... Uh, listen, there's always room for improvement, right? I, I don't mm -hmm. know the next big thing, what it's going to be, but I, I love the way it's going because it just, it's so accessible. When I was a kid, yeah, you knew, okay, you, you have Raw on Monday, Nitro on Monday, you know, thund when Thunder came around, you had Thunder and Smack, and then maybe the, the Saturday morning, that was it. You can yeah. watch wrestling every night of the week. You can stream something. There's all these independent shows that, that stream every weekend. Uh, it's just a great time to be a wrestling fan. And if you hustle, it's a great time to be a pro wrestler. How many belts do you have now? You, you've called yourself the belt well, collector. How many championships do you currently have? Well, you know, remember, I had that, that, that life-threatening bicep injury. I had to relinquish most of them. At one point, I, I, did I have, remember like, you dealing yeah, with that at the wrestling showcase, yeah, but somehow yeah. you were still, you were, yeah. you, couldn't, you couldn't compete in the tournament, but somehow you were able to be in the tournament final. It was a very controversial I, situation. I, and, and I won, and now I have the wrestling showcase championship. So I have that. Uh, at one point, I had like six or seven. I had to relinquish most. Um, but right now, I have the wrestling showcase. I have the uh, internet, of course, which I think is the most prestigious title in wrestling. And I, I have this. The, <laughs> it's the one that people talk about the most. That's right. And then I have this big NWA world title match. I have an impact tag team title match. So I'm on par to like, you know, recollect all these titles by the end of the year and, and get some new ones. So I'm very excited. <laughs> my bag is not excited. My bag is it's already overweight. So what happens when I add all these straps? It's the one thing when you when you go through the TSA, like the checkout and everything like that. Everyone's like, I guess if they take the belt out, then every you know. Yeah. And then if you have to end up taking like three or four out, you know what I mean? Like that. Oh, that yeah, it's it's a travel. It's a travel issue. I mean, right now I I just went to Ireland. There, was, I brought the internet, the wrestling show. So there's definitely at least two with me at all times. But when I win the NWA, of course I got to bring that. You know, when, when I win the, the Impact Tag Team, I'm going to bring that. So that's going to be four that I ha I can't carry every independent title, only if I go to that particular place, you know? Sure. Yes. <laughs> exactly. If people want to follow you, where do they get the pod? Where do they get all the info? Not not the, the fake accounts. Where do they get the real the real Matt Cardona? <laughs> yeah, uh, the Matt Cardona, Twitter, Instagram. I'm trying this TikTok thing out. All the kids are using it, right? And then the, Yeah, uh, you learn the, the dances. <laughs> that's what I, I'm trying uh the major wrestling figure podcast it comes out every friday follow us on social media we have a youtube channel we have our own figure line major bendies which i'm very excited for you know last year we just hey let's let's see if we can make some wrestling figures and now we've made like over 20 in just the calendar year we've got guys like like rick flair jeff jarrett who just came Ooh. back on aw we have his figure available now uh so it's been a lot of fun to you know am i working sure but i'm wrestling and i'm i'm making toys and talking about toys so it doesn't feel like work because i love it there you go when when you do what you love it isn't work really That's it's right. at some point it isn't thank you so much matt appreciate the time once again nwa hard time streaming on worldwide pay-per-view this man going for the belt in a big triple threat match with two i'm gonna win it i'm gonna win the title spoiler <laughs> he's giving the spoiler out <laughs> there yeah. there we go thank you so much remember if you're enjoying this interview check out everything at sportskeeda.com